lot of work and do. Breaking the law, breaking the law with you on the Jive Talking Show. We're gonna break in the law, or break in the law. We're gonna break the podcast world with a little fun. A little heavy metal news for you, juicy sweet buns. Oh my god. Was that not the best one we have done yet and oh so far on this thing? Welcome back. Uh, recording this on the day that would be called the Thanksgiving Givings Day. It's where you eat a lot of turkey and stuff. I'm not, I know people are going to say uh, terrible things about me, but I'm not sure what that represents. And I feel horrible if I'm not, you know, knowing something that I should be knowing, but I don't know what Thanksgiving represents. It's the time you sit down, but I always thought the Thanksgiving was, you know, when they taught you in school, it was about the pilgrims, uh, Christopher Columbus and all of them coming over and eating a nice, big, healthy, sweet corn and turkey dinner with the Indians. But uh, I don't know what it's all about, but I do love to eat. I do love to eat all that stuff. Uh, we are We are postponing ours until Sunday, so... I thought, you know, I'm going to get in here and get my jive talking with Shane Diablo uh, for you guys because, well, I love you so deeply. Now, I watched the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing here, and it says, you know, Rob Halford on performing with K.K. Downing at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It just felt like he was always there. Um, the beef that I'm going to have with this is, yes, he got up there. He, they did embrace. This was a friendship. This is the olive branch. Uh, Rob Halford's arm touching him, and he was enjoying himself, and they welcomed him lovingly. The problems that I'm having with this is Les Binks was there. Um, we knew that there was probably not going to be a Ripper Owens, which is a shame, but there wasn't even, there was one image. Now, I could be wrong. Go back and watch this entire segment on Judas Priest. Alice Cooper inducted them into the Hall of Fame. And you go back and watch this entire thing. I believe there was one shot of Mr. Dave Holland um, that they showed in that clip. And if I remember correctly, he was not mentioned at all. And if you know anything about Dave Holland, and I always forgot his name, I always mixed up uh, Clive Burr, the early uh, Iron Maiden drummer, and Dave Holland, which it's like the word, uh, I know it now because I'm thinking about it, but forklift. For some reason, it just doesn't connect with me. And I go, where's the picky uppy thing that you take the boxes over with the picky up? And they go, the forklift. Uh, Dave Holland's name is the same as me, but the thing is, is that dude was on my formative Judas Priest records. Now, people are going to say, Shane, but Les Binks was on stained glass and stuff, but I'm going to say, but Dave Holland was on British Steel. He was on uh, Screaming for Vengeance, Defender of the Faith, Turbo, Ram It Down. That is my childhood. The first time I heard Danach, 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 United, which is bizarre that they don't really love that song or play the song. I went gaga goo goo for Judas Priest. Dave Holland was the man on those drums. Look at this right here real quick. Current lineup. Ian, let's see if I can get that in there. Ian Hill, Glenn Tempton, and he was up there, and it was good to see him. Rob Halford, Scott Travis, deservingly. Dude's been there since 1989, since, uh, I believe, when Dave Holland left. He joined, and he's been with him a hell of a long time. 92, then he takes a break, 96 to present. And, of course, Richie Faulkner. Sweetheart of a guy. He's up there. He's he's doing the rock guitar and with KK. Uh, he even mentioned in some article, he's like, I, they didn't even have to have me come up there because Andy Sneap was sitting in the audience. But not a word mentioned about Dave Holland, yet Les Binks is up there on stage with him. Um, there's KK in the uh, former, former category. A lot of people have come and gone, you know. 1969, 1970, 1970. So these probably, yeah, all early, early, early. Simon Phillips, there's Les. Les was in the band from 1977 to 1979. He was on Stained Glass, Killing Machine, Unleashed in the East. I, I respect the man, and he deserves to be there. Dave Holland, 1979, right? 1979 to 89, 10 years. From British Steel to Ram It Down. He was on all of those records. 
and British Steel was was the number one. And then of course Tim Ripper Owens, 1996, 2003. He was not mentioned either. He's also on these records here. So the thing that got me the most was, I mean, they were all loving, they were all respecting. Thank you and heavy metal and keep it go, you know. And Rob Halford says, "I'm the gay man in the band." Um, but that no mention of Dave Holland. Let's get onto this really quick and see if they mention if they talk to KK or anything about uh, in a new interview with San, San Antonio current Judas Priest singer Rob Halford uh, was asked if performing with the original Priest guitarist KK Downing at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony helped put aside some of the acrimony that KK and uh, has shown about not being in a band for the last few tours. Halford responded, I think we, sh we should let the music speak for itself, really, because as you'll see from the performance, I think it's going to be on HBO soon. It is. I watched it there. You'll see that all of the stuff is irrelevant. All the things that have been said and suggested just float off in the air. What matters is what's going down on the stage at the time you're performing together. And there's there and there he is only on the right hand side of me, bloody old hell. I was like, damn it. It just felt like he was always there. It was like he's always been there. And behind me, and there's 70s era priest drummer Les Banks, and the memories are just overwhelming. Still, are we going to read on and see Dave Holland? Uh, I would love to know what people... Okay, here we go. Jews priest members who got inducted. Okay, so he got inducted. He just didn't get his name mentioned or face shown, right? Judas priest members who got inducted... Include current members Halford, Ian, Glenn Tempton, Scott Travis, along with former members Downing, Binks, and late drummer Dave Holland. Not a word mentioned about him. Halford, Hill, Tempton, and Travis were joined by Binks, Downing, and current guitarist Richie Faulkner for a three-song medley. You got another thing coming, honey child, sister child, honey child. Breaking the law. Living after midnight. And you just see all these people out there. It's weird. There's one moment where, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lenny Kravitz. He looks like a fly to me for some reason. He looks like a human fly with the glasses and shit he's wearing. But he almost goes to say the lines of the song and realizes he don't know the words to the song. So he kind of goes, oh. But um, let's see. Is this what Al... Uh, Cooper says, they're electrifying on stage in one of the hardest hitting live bands in the history of rock and roll. Priest has carried the flag of hard rock and heavy metal proudly for something like 50 years, never wavering or following trends or pretending to be anything but exactly what they are. They are flying high tonight, much deserved and long overdue. Yeah, here's uh, Halford's acceptance speech. I'm the gay guy. I, I always mix up my, uh, you know, my uh, accents and whatnot. I'm the gay guy in the band. We call ourselves the heavy metal community, which is all inclusive, no matter what your sexual identity is, what you look like or what you believe in or don't believe in. Everybody's welcome. Um, not Dave Holland, though, right? I mean, I hate to beat that dead horse, but he was... Dave Holland was the back there going boo ba boo boo ba ba do 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 you know he was he was the dude so let's just remember him if you happen to watch this Rob Halford please remember that okay thank you Nita Strauss is going in for a meniscus surgery we want to wish her well right here at the uh, Jive Talking with Shane Diablo podcast we want to wish her the very best but um I want to know what's going on with it. Nita Strauss to undergo surgery for torn meniscus. Where is that? Is that in your neck or your legs? Uh, former Alice Cooper and current Demi Lovato guitarist Nita Strauss will undergo surgery for a torn meniscus in the late December. In late December, the, uh, the procedure will take place seven months after she first sustained the injury while on the road with Cooper. Really? I Did we know about an injury? Early today, Strauss, who has been in the house, uh, who has been in house guitarist for Los Angeles Rams football games since the team moved to SoFi Stadium in 2020, I don't know what that sentence means at all, took to her Instagram to share a video update of her journey. She said, as transcribed by the blabbermouth, 
Hi! <laughs> LOL, oh my gosh. Is everyone here? Hmm, let me see. I have a little knee update for you guys. For those of you who've been wondering, I did my pre-op last week, and unfortunately, it didn't go exactly as I hoped it would. According to my doctor, eight months of performing on a torn meniscus, right? A torn meniscus did not do me any favors at all. The injury has not improved. Unfortunately, it's gotten worse. Oh, Angie. So surgery has had to be pushed to the end of the year. After Christmas, after the last Rams game, and then it'll be a full month before I can do anything at all ever again. So no shows, no performing, no nothing. I'm super disappointed at that. I was hoping to be all ready and be on the mend by now, but it is what it is. LOL, heartsy heartsy, I'm out. See ya, girlfriend. All right. Uh, I don't know if that... Insta, she was doing a live video, right? Instagram live video. Nita, uh, Nita previously discussed her torn meniscus in an October in an interview with Metal uh, Meltdown of Detroit. WRIF radio station. Bringing you the rock hits, baby cakes. At the time, she said, I'm babying myself right now because I've been touring uh, with a torn meniscus since May. So I'm actually not as injury prone as I usually would be because I'm taking it a little easier. I have a surgery scheduled at the end of this tour between Rams games. Ooh, we love the Rams. Go Rams. Uh, is it going to mention anything about how this happened? So right now I've been playing through the most serious injury I've ever had in my whole entire life and I'm really just trying to take care of that. Make sure it doesn't get worse before it gets better. Getting better every day. What does she say here? I've had two uh, asked if she's uh, taking cortisone shots of the ordeal, the pain while performing on stage in recent months. I've had two. I now can't have any more because it's too close to my surgery date. It's getting tough now, but we're making it through. We wish her all the best. Wonderful. Nita Strauss with that hot rock and jam with Alyssa White. Goltz. What did you think of that? It was pretty good, right? Uh, getting into this, I wanted to see this because there's a Gary or uh, Rick Hunnelt. I always say Exodus. Ex-Exodus guitarist Rick Hunnelt. There was Rick Holt, Rick Hunnold, and I always got them mixed up, but I always remember they were great on that uh, Pleasures of Flesh. Uh, is it Pleasures of... It's not Pleasures of the Flesh, is it? Yeah. I love that record. But he's got the inside scoop here, this bro. He's got the inside scoop on why they took Kirk Hammett over Dave Mustaine into Metallica. Why Metallica chose Kirk Hammett to replace Dave Mustaine? I got to find out. Inquiring minds need to know. Former Exodus guitarist Rick Hunnold was recently interviewed by Exodus singer Steve Zetro, the Zetman Zetberg, Sousa Zetro's Toxic Vault YouTube channel. During that chat, Rick, who joined Exodus in 1983, several months after the departure of Kirk Hammett, was asked why he thinks Metallica's James Hetfield and Larsing Ulrich chose Hammett to replace Dave Mustaine just prior to the recording of Kill Em All. He responded as transcribed by the Bible mouth. This is why I think James chose Kirk. It's because Dave and Kirk's style back then were similar. Pentatonic bluesy. James didn't want no effect on his shit. He wanted Kirk to play dry, no echo. Just a real dry martial tone. Wah, wah pedal is cool. I mean, if you got a wah, wah, it's totally cool, though. But none of that other junk. No echoes, just wah, wahs. I, I, is cool, I guess. But he had a similar style to Dave. Individually, personality-wise, they were completely two different human beings. I would say that 100%. When you see Dave Mustaine talk, he's a little uh, barbocious. Is that a word? He's, he's very vivacious, barbocious. He's very, um, I did this, I do that, and uh, Kirk Hammett is very laid back. He is a surfer, hippie kind of a guy. Back in the day when we went to go see Metallica, the reason why you went to go see Metallica is because we wanted to go see Dave. That's it. Rick continued, Dave played lead guitar. He spoke in between songs. James sang. That's all he did. 
He didn't play rhythm guitar. This is interesting news. I didn't know this. It was Dave. It was the Dave Mustaine show. Period. That's it. And he was funny as shit. Drunk. Oh God, he was awesome. Dave was like the the king back then. So he was doing comedy gigs up there. I could see it. I could see a young Dave Mustaine just saying whatever's on his brain at the time. And that's weird if James Hetfield's just up there with no guitar. Because I've always thought James Hetfield was the front. He, I'm the, I'm the lion. I'm the, I'm the king of the band. How would you get kicked out of your own band? I don't know, Hanel added. I don't want to talk about that. But as far as I'm concerned, personally, Dave Mustaine is the godfather of thrash metal. There you go. Gar Rick Hunnell. No, it's Gary Holt, isn't it? Gary Holt, Rick Hunnell. That's what I... Oh, Jesus. Someone's down there in the comments right now reaming me a new one. Uh, another quick uh, Metallica story, but it's from the, uh, the side of um, Diamond Head. Uh, Metallica damn near became a rock and roll sensation off of Diamond Head covers. So I wanted to get into this and see because he talks about how fantastic it was for them to record their songs. And I'd like to see numbers, please. Diamond Head guitarist says Metallica covering his band's songs has been an incredible bonus. And uh, especially in this day and age with streaming, they get paid on those, baby. If you wrote the song, they get a bigger piece of the pie than Metallica gets on that song because they're the, they're the creator of the song. I think uh, Metallica gets a performance fee, but they don't get the money for the song. So this has got to be good. Diamond Head influenced a slew of 80s thrash metal bands, in particular Metallica, which recorded Am I Evil as a B-side to their 1984 Creeping Death single, again included on the band's multi-platinum 1998 cover album Garage Inc. Metallica would record three additional Diamond Head songs. Helpless, fantastic. The Prince... Uh, it's electric, right? Uh, in a new interview with Denim and Blether, Diamond Head guitarist Brian Tatler was asked what it's like for him to see Metallica still performing his songs. He responded as transcribed. Well, <laughs> it's been going on for a long time. At first, while well, they're from England, well, it's been going on a long time. At first, back in 1984, I didn't think it was going to be such a big deal because they were on a small label called Music for Nations and they'd only been over to the UK to play the Marquee Club in London. And things like that, to me, they were still Lars Ulrich, Metallica drummer band. I knew Lars, but I never met the others. And they covered Am I Evil? Oh, and, and we just thought it was very, very flattering, you know. It's like, well, it's very flattering. They didn't, uh, they'd done a great job, but it didn't expect them to become the biggest metal band of all time. you got to be blatant kidding me. And the income that's, that sales of that song on their record would generate, I had no idea that it would help provide me with income for years and years to come. So it's been incredible bonus. If you like, if you like for Diamond Head, uh, and especially for myself and Sean and Harris, original Diamond Head singer as the writers, we still play. I don't even know if I said any of that right because it's just seem, seemed like jumbled words to me. We still play Am I Evil live, and it still goes down. And I think people don't think it if they got it into if they got into Diamond Head through Metallica as long as they got in the... Okay. And I don't care if they got into Diamond Head through Metallica as long as they got there in the end. A lot of people, and I mean a bleeding bloody lot of people, know that song through Metallica, and it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's just a good song. It's incredible that it's, the last, the te that it's lasted the test of time, really. Over 40 years, and people still love it so much. So I'm lucky to have that song like that in my set. And, and we also do The Prince, It's Electric, Helpless. So the four songs that Metallica covered are a big part of our set list, you bleeding bloody buggers. So there you have that. Any monies? 
Is he, what do you tell, tell us about money? We got a bloody bleeding lot of money. Well, he says it income for years and years. It's not a garbage man or a dishwasher's income for years and years. Remember that. It's not a construction worker's income for years and years, but good on him. How lucky to be in a band where they just, you know, I mean, the, they were the, the new wave of British heavy metal. So, you know, the American bands are going, I'm digging this stuff. Let's get into this real quick. Look at this big Humpty Dumpty over here. That's Doyle von Wolfgang Frankenstein. And you got old Lumpy Guts over here. And it says, Misfits Cancel New Year's Eve Concert in Las Vegas. I used to be a huge fan of Mr. Lumpy Guts. But I'm not anymore. Not after he treated me in such manners that he did. With everything. Legendary, but I do love Misfits. And I do love Von Frankensperger. Legendary punk rock man Misfits are cancelled or has canceled its previously announced New Year's Eve concert at the Michelob Ultra Arena. Jesus. What a name. Michelob Ultra. It's not even mad. You're going to have sports in there? You know, people go, you're drinking a Michelob Ultra? What are you? Man, you, you're some kind of a pansy or something like that, right? And they're going to have all their sporting events in there. And they, they'll only sell you Michelob Ultra, right? Earlier today, Misfits issued the following statement via social media. It is with regret that I, due to an unexpected personal matter, the Misfits are unable to perform on show in Las Vegas on December 31st. Hi, we look forward to hopefully seeing you at the show in 2023. Refunds will be available at point of purchase. In September, Misfits featuring original singer-songwriter Tubby Guts, oh, Glenn Danzig, and original bassist Jerry Only. Yes, we know him. Um, and we like him. Uh, Do Dar Doyle Wolf Gang Von Frankenstein. I'll get there. We like him. Uh, headlined Riot Fest 2022 in Chicago, performing the landmark first album, Walk Among Us. Good record in full. For, I like Static Age, though. I'm kind of a Static Age kind of a fella. The initial comeback performance, Misfit Danzig, only Vaughn, uh, Dave Lombardo. The estranged bandmates played together for the first time in since 1983 and were backed by former Slayer drummer Dave Lombardo and guitarist A.C. Slade. Uh, and now they've got the lineup. Davey, Davey Boy's still there with them. I like the Misfits. I like everything. I used to like him. I don't anymore. So there you have that. It is time for your comments. And I will say something. I don't know when they made this change, but they changed it to ats by the name. So I apologize from here on out. If I don't know you and, and, I'm, and it's whatever your at is, is what it is because... I don't know. That's terrible that they changed it like that. But anyways, let's get into this. You got white bread. You got white bread here. He says, Lars takes care of business side of the band that James hates. James writes the riffs. Lars counts the money. Business partners. Amen to that. Hey, you know, whatever works. Maybe James is not, he, he doesn't, you know, he's not a fan of that. He likes to look in the bank account and go, well, I'm good enough. And Lars likes to get those investments going like Gene Simmons likes to keep them, uh, uh, things coming. You know, quick uh, off topic here. Gene Simmons, I saw the Kiss Cruise. Uh, are you smarter than a Gene Simmons or something? And he's sitting there on stage and has an entire rack of some of all the garbage that he's hawking on GeneSimmons.com behind him. So he's got his root beers and he's got this, that, and the other thing. And it's Gene Simmons. It's like, my God, that guy never stops selling, does he? He's going to have some kind of a sales thing when they're putting him, you know, firecrackers and shit are going to shoot out of his coffin at the very end. And it's going to be for some, you know, fucking business deal he's working on. Explodingcoffins.com or something. I don't know. Uh, Zayas coming in here. JLT. Uh, great vocalist. JLT. Jo Joel Turner. Okay. Great vocalist up there with Stanley himself. So many bands using tracks that it's hard to keep up. It's basically industry standard now. Neither Megadeth or Metallica are really relevant anymore. Uh, I don't say that. 
don't don't say that. Everybody hates Sharon, but without her, Ozzy would not be alive today. She kept him on track and supported him through constant relapse and put up with all of his affairs he had. She is one of the best rock managers ever, and being a woman made it more difficult. I mean, he's not wrong. He is not wrong in that statement. Right? Went to Cannibal Corpse, Dark Funeral, Immolation, Black Anvil. I just saw some Black Anvil stuff. 10-hour bus ride. Well worth it. You can take... I'd like to know where the bus busing system... 10-hour 10, 10 bus ride? Is that the Greyhound? Talked to a few people about the Pantera reunion. A guy in his 50s didn't like Zach, and other people in their 20s thought Zach was cheesy and corny. So it's not just the old folks who dislike Wild. The younger generation doesn't embrace him either. Boy, oh boy. I have a video coming up, and it is on Zach Wildy. And it is coming, and he performs the greatest guitar solo in the entire world ever played by Zach Wild. So, um, you're just going to have to wait for that video. But it is called Zach Wild Plays the Greatest, the, the greatest Zach Wild Solo in the World. So, there you go. Very good points, sir. There's a thumb for you, too. I'm sorry for rambling. I ran a Spartan race at City... Oh, this is Ryan Wade. Here we go. I ran a Spartan race at City Field. The way he's got City Field there is like that City Bank. Ate pizza at Lucali in Brooklyn and got jive talking all in the same damn day. At 49, life is good. That's what I am talking about, my friend. He ran a Spartan race at City Field, ate a piece of pizza in Brooklyn, and listened to a little fucking Shane Z shit. You get the thumb. Bang. And someone gave you a thumb, too. Thank you, sir. Miss Althea coming in. Uh, the dumbstruck fool says, Joe Lynn Turner, preach. She's on board. All the best to the OG hot potato boy, Jeff Tate, in his continued recovery. Uh, yeah. Wait, all the best to the OG Hot Potato Boy. Yeah, he is the king. He's the original gangster Hot Potato Boy, Jeff Tate, in his continued recovery. That almost scared me there, like you knew something I didn't, like he fired them all or something, and that will not stand. When he had the other HPBs get back on the road, I think he should open with the Empire track hand on heart. Okay. I don't know if I know that one. I know there was a ton of hits off that record, but I don't know if I know that. Uh, still miss out there. Oh, yes. The line between D. Schneider and Taylor Swift is indeed quite blurred, especially when it comes to Japanese-inspired trinket-type merch. I found it both hilarious and disturbing. Yes, she's talk talking about the Popo Punk doll. Funko. Uh... That they, they finally gave him one. D. Snyder, they finally did. It looks like he, uh, Taylor Swift. I am sure you would recognize Chef Curtis Stone if you saw him. He appears regularly on the Today Show, slings a signature line of cookware on HSN, Home Shopping Network. Nope. Has been on Iron Chef, Top Chef, okay, Master Chef. Hmm. I wouldn't, I've seen quite a few. Uh, Master Chef, Celebrity Apprentice Contestant. Nope, never watched an episode of that. The same season Brett Michaels and Sharon Osbourne were on. I might have to watch that. Um, still mess off the year. Since Jive Talking is a no request zone, all I will put out there in this forum regarding Edward e Edward's ex Japan request, Silent Jealousy, is a subtle hint. Hint. All right. I love that she's playing by the rules here. I must have gave uh, Carl Frederick Alexander Rask. Oh, there's Rask. Yeah, we know him. See, I don't like this. I don't like this changing all this shit around because I know him as Rask. I already gave him a heart already. Your videos make short days better, make me laugh and forget my problems for a while. Would be fun if you would comment, comment the Osbournes. Um... I know that's something I would love to do. It's just easy pickings with the, I mean, my God, the, every single episode of the Osbournes is a train wreck, right? 
Well, you got your heart. I'll give you a thumb, too, because, um, you know, I gave you the heart on accident when I was reading a comment a few days previo. Um, yeah. Bo. Bowser, 36. Uh, Paul lost half his money in that divorce. They can't stop so long as people keep buying tickets. Yeah. Another thing on the Kiss Cruise, they're doing Family Feud with Kiss. And it says, um, top five things you should bring on a Kiss Cruise. And um, I think the number one was like uh, your Kiss shit. Bring your Kiss stuff. And the other one was like your wallet. <laughs> you know, it just kept going down. All right, my friend. Good job there. Bingo. See, I know this is Dr. Funkenstein, but I'm not liking how they changed that. And, and, and are you guys happy with the way they changed that? Because you know him as Dr. Funkenstein, but now he's at Neil Johnston. Right? I loved being cussed out by you impersonating Sharon Osbourne. Um, yeah, I thought that I thought you deserved it. And so she, you know, I, I channeled her. And uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of them. I don't know why they did that. Or did, is that just an option? I don't know. Uh, Dr. Funkenstein again here. Please, for the love of God, don't change your avatar picture, or I'll never know who the hell you are again. Joe Lynn Turner for Music President. Uh, little microphone plus sign tracks equal poo. Um, is he saying that uh, Joe Lynn Turner for Music President? Because there's a poo-poo there. Does that mean it stinks? Uh, glad to see Jeff Tate is doing better. Seeing him do Rage for Order and Empire was fantastic. I hate to admit it, but I have an Eddie Van Halen and the Kiss Alive 2 Tor Funkos. That's Yeah, I, I think I've got a ghost one. Yeah, look at this. We got a little, little ghost guy. You see that? Isn't that? I mean, they're fun, you know. This is a Poppy Emeritus 3. But yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're just fun. They're fun, okay? It's okay to have fun. Dr. Funkenstein, you can have some Funkenstein, some, some mother Funkin' fun around here, all right? And Mike Stelzer, because he's got my, his name in there, so that didn't change too much, although he's from the future, 2027. Iron Chef, that's the show with the guy. Hey! I got to meet Wolfgang Puck one time. He was very short. You didn't try any of his fine cuisine. That's the only thing you had to say about Wolfgang Puck was that he was a, well, you're just a little itty bitty fella, aren't you? Oh, you're no bigger than a knee high to a squirrel's ass. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Loving you guys. Loving you. Um, no, come on, baby. We had the thing, man. We had the good times going. Tone. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Tone. Jive. Jive talking with your motherfucking best friend. Oh, baby girl. Fucking heavy 